A Wisconsin man got the experience of his life when he was invited to help deck the halls at the White House. Laura Langemo spoke to him about that opportunity. Wow. I heard, and I heard him say that was a volunteer job. He ought to get paid. I mean, I know what government work pays. It's good stuff. There you go. Police want you to be on the lookout for a man they say is armed and dangerous and possibly still in the area. 40-year-old Antonio Scales is wanted by police for the murder of a mother of five from Reedsville. Veronica Broadnax was in a house party with 25 other people when she was shot. Two men were also hurt. Scales has outstanding warrants for first degree murder, attempted first degree murder and assault with a deadly weapon with intent to kill. Lexington police officers know stores are crowded with last minute Christmas customers. So as a part of their holiday crime prevention efforts, they're focusing their attention on shopping areas that are targets for quick thefts. So don't be surprised if you see an increased police presence. Officers say shoppers can help them out too by putting their items in the trunk and locking car doors. A Virginia woman shaken up after surviving a terrifying trip to the store. She was abducted at knife point yesterday. Yep. New York to Los Angeles holiday travel is being made even worse thanks to a strange weather pattern. Yeah, we are experiencing unusually warm weather while the West is getting so much snow that even ski slopes are just overwhelmed. A church, two convenience stores and an elementary school all ransacked overnight. Randolph County Sheriff's deputies are investigating a string of break ins all on the same road on Old US Highway 311 in Sophia. Two suspects are in custody. Jasmine Spencer joins us live with the latest on the investigation. Jasmine, what happened? Today is the last day to drop off presents for Fox 8 Gifts for Kids, and we're grateful for the donations that are still coming in, including the ones we're going to talk about right now. Jeanette Turner is here. She's with Harry Veterans Community Outreach. And Jeanette, thank you for coming in. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Tell us about the toys and the effort it took to get some of these. Joe, what can you tell us? Well, police are still here at the Sun Trust in the Lake Jeanette area. I'm going to step out of the way so that you can see. They're still not letting people go inside as of now. This bank was robbed around 2.30 this afternoon. Police are telling us they think a black man in a gray hoodie is responsible. He passed a note demanding money. We have some pictures to show you. The police department want you to get a good look at these pictures. Fox 8's Joe Dominguez live tonight from School Road off Old Walkertown in Winston-Salem. And Joe, neighbors believe this is happening overnight, right? Yeah, they do. They say that is the first thing they've noticed upon leaving the house over the last few days. And you notice it too, right across the street from a garage like this. If you're backing down the driveway, this is what you see. The woman who lives across the street here says the more she sees it spreading, the angrier she gets. And that's likely when he ended up on Goral Street. That's where Fox H. Joe Dominguez is right now. And police say he apparently went after cars and, and even tried to break into homes there. Yeah, and at least one woman was hurt, though not ser seriously, according to police. They say that he broke into this home behind me and assaulted a woman in her own home. A person who lives across the street said it looked like a movie scene playing out from his front porch. Terror in downtown Greensboro. Police say 26 year old Isaiah Jarrell Fox tried to steal one car by gunpoint, stole another car and crashed it and forced his way into at least two homes. The first on Goral Street. Stepped out on my porch just to water the plants out there and I saw the lady there on that street come running out of her house ran over to my neighbor's house yelling there's a man in my house and he's going to kill me or something to that effect. That woman got help from her next door neighbor. He tells us she had a four year old in her arms. Obviously I was a little frightened when I saw uh, her shrieking and screaming and running with her kid, but I figured that I needed to get uh, just get them inside off the street. Steve Bird says the woman received some cuts, but she was not shot or stabbed. She was clearly very shaken up, very frightened. It wasn't just this house though. Police are also investigating a break in by Fox at a City View apartment. Fox left after the apartment owner ran for help. One block over though, he gave one woman and this neighborhood quite the scare. I, I feel really sorry for her. I mean, that would scare anybody that would have to go through there. You know, I, I don't know how he got in the house. We still have seen people jogging through this neighborhood, even walking their dog as little as 30 minutes ago. Neighbors here say this could have played out in any neighborhood. They don't feel any less safe living close to downtown. Neil and Katie. 
Good evening and welcome to the Fox 8 10 o'clock news. It's not a solution, but a good stopgap. Greensboro's police chief delivering tonight his assessment of a controversial policy change regarding traffic stops. His department implemented that change 30 days ago, and it marked the first significant effort to address research that showed black drivers were pulled over and searched more often than white drivers. Fox 8's Joe Dominguez is live tonight at City Hall. Joe, what does the policy change show so far? Well, by not pulling over drivers for minor infractions like a broken tail light or too dark of a tint on the windows, it actually balanced out the number of white and black drivers in this small sample size since late October. We have those numbers. They were presented tonight. Greensboro police have pulled over 566 black drivers and 556 white drivers. Traffic stops may have gotten the attention of the New York Times and many others outside of Greensboro, but here at the latest city council meeting, it's only the jumping off point to another discussion about racial tensions and police actions. All over the nation, the issue of police and policing has emerged as a major concern, as it should be. For you to sit here at this council and speak about black on black crime without any apparent knowledge of the systemic racism issues that go on. The topic brought up speaker after speaker for close to an hour, but didn't overshadow results of a policy change implemented by Greensboro police to address the two to one ratio of blacks being pulled over and four to one ratio of blacks being searched by police. I thought that was the right move 30 days ago, particularly in light of us trying to get our hands around all the information and the data that's out there so we can make more permanent decisions. The Greensboro City Council also feels more needs to be done than just a policy change by police. They agreed to set up new community meetings within each district of Greensboro to bridge the gap between police and the public. We have to see where our differences are and we have to see where our similarities are. We can sit here and point fingers at police all we want, um, but until we take all those fingers pointing at police and ball it up in a fist and become a, a strong community and work together, we, we, then we'll be able to uh, tackle these issues as it relates to black on black crime. It, it, it's alarming. As we've mentioned in previous stories, police will soon have new data from university researchers to pour through to help address this issue. Well, a rainy start to the Dixie Classic there this evening couldn't wash out events like the demolition derby or stand in the way of those fair food lovers. Fox Ace Joe Dominguez live there now. So, Joe, what was lost in the rain there at the fair tonight? Well, there were no big crowds here for the first day as anticipated. And also the rides behind me never really got rolling. They have an odd look to them right now because the fair is completely shut down. It shut down about an hour ago because of heavy winds. But we still found some people out there hoping to taste a little bit of the fair regardless. On the Midway, many seek out and find exactly what they're looking for, no matter how many raindrops they have to fight through to get it. Tia Kane hunts down elephant ears. Good enough to come out in this. <laughs> Do you regret your decision at all? No, not at all. Not at all. On this year's first day of the Dixie Classic Fair. They're diehards that love the fair. I can't imagine anybody sitting on the sofa tonight going, oh, hey, let's go to the fair. <laughs> Keeping everything warm and ready takes some engineering. Mike and Glenda Chambers have a full kitchen set up behind their munchie wagon. They also have a full scale floor laid down so they don't lose ground in miserable conditions. Yeah, it's kind of sunk in the middle with the uh, tarp underneath the flooring. I think that we have a river running through us. Above their heads, the wind keeps the lights moving and the walls rattling, but they're focused on feeding anyone brave enough for the conditions. You're batting down the hatches. I mean, it's, um, it's gonna be play it by ear, do the best you can with what you got and Hope for the best. And they're hoping for the best with weather tomorrow. We asked people out here, how would they describe this? Our favorite description that we heard was monsoonish. The ferry is set to open tomorrow at 9 o'clock. Katie Neal. It's an alarming trend in Burlington. Police fear someone could get killed. They want more help from the public to cut down on the number of shootings into homes. Fox H's Joe Dominguez live right now at Burlington Police Headquarters. So, Joe, what kind of help do the officers need? Well, this may sound odd, but police here say they need calls from the public when those shots are fired into homes. Oftentimes, police officers hear those shots, but they never hear a peep from neighbors unless someone's hurt. When they get mean, you just get meaner. 77-year-old Robert Miles of Burlington is ready for anything, which is why when he heard gunshots in front of his home this past July on Grace Avenue, he told his son to get ready to shoot back. I told him, I said, get your gun, they're coming. <laughs> 
Did you get that, your gun? I mean, did you think it was an attack on your house? No. The bullet was stopped by his triple pane glass. Next door, a glass door was shattered, but no one was hurt. Burlington police are seeing a rise in the number of shootings into homes, but it's a problem they're trying to attack. For the more recent ones have been, we've, we've stepped up. We did some community policing activities in these neighborhoods and, and got out door to door talking to people to find out what they felt were some of the issues in the area that was causing these increases. Police also need people to call police when they see things like people driving slowly by a home just before hearing gunshots. Another tactic, community mentoring, helping teens realize gunplay is dangerous. When you leave your house with a gun, bad things are going to happen. Um, when you shoot into someone else's house, chances are bad things are going to happen. Miles says he's not afraid of fighting back. We'll just pull out the guns and lay them real handy in the house, easy to get to, and they start coming this way, we're going to send some back the other way. But police say he can help the community more simply by reporting issues to them. We really don't need to have that mentality because, um, unfortunately, bullets don't care where they go. And police say if you do hear gunshots, consider it an emergency and call 911 because they want to get officers there as quickly as possible. Neil well, tis the season to be driven crazy on the roads. Especially if your destination is a shopping center filled with shoppers. Fox 8's Joe Dominguez live tonight from Wendover Avenue in Greensboro. So, Joe, how crazy were things out there this evening? They were pretty crazy, and you can see over my shoulder, there's still a lot of traffic out here for 1015 on a Monday night. Now, by all accounts, some drivers say it wasn't so bad out on the roads. I mean, they say at least they didn't have to take a bus from their car to the mall, just in the parking lot alone. But other people were ready for what turned out to be a crazy day on the roads. If you're still hearing the sounds of the season while on the way to wrapping up your Christmas shopping, be warned. The stores were not that crowded, but the traffic in and out was bad. It's full today. It was really full. Yeah, we had to wait uh, a lot of line. If they're coming out now, uh, expect to wear tennis shoes and park a long ways away. For some in the Haynes Mall area of Winston-Salem, the hardest part of the shopping trip wasn't picking out what to buy, but where to find a car. Yeah, it was hard trying to find a parking space. Get in here and trying to find a car on the way out. And when you get out of the parking lot, it's more of the same congestion on the way back home. We hate to shop. <laughs> I hate to shop. <laughs> People on their phones or checking their shopping list twice can make the drive dangerous. Yes, because everybody seems to be in a hurry. See a lot of people on their cell phones doing other things? Right, they are. On West Wendover Avenue in Greensboro, the traffic is just as heavy with late shoppers at work. But for many people, the shopping and the season is worth the extra time spent in the car. Getting ready to go out and buy packages for our family and our friends and our kids. What a great day. I got some stuff for my best friend and my dad. What's fun about going shopping? You can describe what's fun about going shopping. You can spend money and find clothes. <laughs> but they're not for you, are they? I mean, they're for other people. These are gifts. Yeah, I know, but sometimes you get to um, spend yourself on yourself. And in case you are not keeping count, there's only a few hours left before there's only three days before Christmas. On a cold morning or night, you want to leave your car running to warm it up. But if you walk away from the car, it's just what thieves want. New on Fox 8 at 10. Around Fox 8's Joe Dominguez is live in Greensboro tonight working on this story. Joe, police say this is a widespread problem. And police were surprised by this as well. They had four reports of cars being stolen all at about the same time this morning, all in different neighborhoods across Greensboro. Normally they'd be talking about car safety in shopping centers like this, but right now there's a danger closer to home. Fox 8's Joe Dominguez checking out the crowds at the Grand there at Friendly Center in Greensboro. Hey, Joe. Hey, how are you doing? I've been told by our wonderful four o'clock producer here that this is supposed to be the Cliff's Notes version of Star Wars fandom. So let's get right to it over here. Here's a guy who has a shirt on. Explain it for us. Uh, this is the new villain of the film, Kylo Ren, played by Adam Driver. Spoiler alert there? No, I don't think so. Okay, yeah, we just want to be safe there. Okay, we also have an X-Wing fighter pilot. X-Wing pilot Wedge Antilles. All right, well, thank you for the details. Red suit. Red suit. Red suit, okay. Yeah, yeah, you may think this guy right here, he just has a t-shirt on with the old school villain Darth Vader, but he's been studying up on the old movies. He can tell you a lot more about these movies than most people. And then finally, right down here, there's some special socks to show off. Kind of tell us about these socks. Uh, they're Darth Vader socks, which I just got today, actually, from him for my birthday. Yeah. And I, I had to wear them. 
Of course I you did. I had to wear them. Of course. Well, unfortunately, you can't just come down here today and get tickets.